Well, double announcement. It's a fresh pop. And the commission double says... Double announcement. <laughs> commission says the final pick of day one is about to take place with the uh, sixth pick in the 2019 FF Dynasty's Mock It Up Before You Fuck It Up. Big Co is on the clock with my team. Cowboy butts drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> best team name so far. Idiot. It is the best team name so far. The league name is Clash of the Tight Ends, so makes a little bit of sense in a... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's so proud of himself. You got... You know, <laughs> Big Co completely didn't get it until I said, yeah. well, the, the name of the league is Clash of the Tight Ends. So you really <laughs> stuck with that name, huh? <laughs> yeah, I thought oh, it was either it. that or... Uh, well, I put a name out there that I was going to change, but I just never got around to it. And I figured you did the same, And then, but you... Ha- we both had, had the same. I had a reason to name mm. mine. We got... Uh, yeah, I mean, yours is better than mine, but it's not good. It's best team name in the league, maybe. Oh, no, no, no. I, got the, bad be- I got the best team name. What's your team name, Jay? Samaje Toi. It's not bad. Yeah, has nothing to do with tight ends, though. If Samaj P. Ryan was really good, <laughs> then it'd be the best name ever. <laughs> yeah, but he was not even relevant last year in this league. I mean, I guess Samaj Toi and tight ends does have something to do with see? each other if you want to look at it like that. I'm not having a Samaj Toi without a tight end or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. All right. Well. All right. So Casey who's on comes the clock? in. Big Co's on the clock. This is pick one six, correct? Yes. Casey comes into this draft, much like the Bears, fairly well-rounded team. Uh, we talked about this on Patreon a couple weeks ago about how he went through, maybe last week, about went, get, went through this startup auction and he purchased uh, Darius Geis and Hunter Henry, both already on the IR. Well, Hunter Henry never technically went on the IR, but he purchased two injured players for cheap. Um, and I I like that because now coming into this year, he's got more players than you thought he had. And you're like, look at there. That's, Boom. That, that worked out well. Um, he's got uh, – and the one quarterback league, we're not going to start with quarterbacks, but that is his weakest position. Um, I had Alex Smith hold reliable, but he might be done for life. So <laughs> I think I – mean, you had Marcus Mariota. You must have – Well, I, I picked up Mariota. Okay. And obviously you picked up Derek Carr. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you – Play. Two yeah, two dollar pickup two dollar pickup quarterbacks right there. Uh, it's a Matt, short bench right now because it just started and we haven't expanded anything. It's only eighteen, 18 players, players with two taxi squads. So, very short bench. It's Three fun. IRs and though. No reason not to have people in your IR. Very short bench and a big starting lineup requirement. Mm-hmm. So it's a fun league. Um, Matty Breida over there who was playing hurt all last year, although playing well when he was playing. Crowell could be on, done for career. Probably out of here. Probably an easy cut at this point. Definitely on a short bench. Easy cut. Crowell's out of here. Only goes up from there. Well, we'll, add, uh, we'll add players this year, but yeah. But Ezekiel Elliott, Mark Ingram, who left the Saints and somehow went to just as good of a position, which hardly never happens for a running back leaving the Saints. So you got two good starting running backs right there with Philip Lindsay, the undrafted mm, a free third agent. good starting running Another back. Another good right running back. And then Sony Michelle, another good running back. And Darius Geis, another good running back. So Casey hit him hot and heavy. Um, and another shot of Rumplemans. And then so and then he's got Doug Baldwin, which uh, we can all pour one out if that really comes to fruition because my heart will be broke. I love Doug Baldwin. Yeah. I will say Casey was on the Doug Baldwin train way before me, and I got on at the towards the end of the line, and that wasn't nearly as much fun as Casey riding the real good Doug Baldwin train. Um, Chris Godwin, solid, solid asset. Deshaun Hamilton, a good pickup during the year because it's a cheap, uh, it's a small, up. small bench, small bench. So Deshaun was a great pickup. Uh, Allen Robinson, Golden Tate, Demarius Thomas. You know, heard his uh, what he blew. He blew his Achilles, uh, Achilles think, too. Yeah, right. Yeah, he did. Well, that was Manuel Sanders. Uh, I think Demarius might have done the same damn thing. I don't know if he did. Well. Yikes! Hmm. Not good. Um, Sammy Watkins, Day Day. Sammy. So some starters there. Nothing really blowing you Will away. Will Fuller in the IR. Nothing really. Will Fuller in the IR. Forget about that guy. Nothing, nothing really blowing you away, but really solid. Uh, but then he turns up the heat. Eric Ebron, George Kittle. Again, I mentioned Hunter Henry. So he's got three of like the top seven dynasty tight ends right there. Um, and yeah, you got Will Fuller and Darius Geis on the injured reserve. So Christian Kirk and Christian Kirk down there, like a pretty solid team. You you went into the draft like the Bears. You had no needs. Okay, so at one six, I almost hit you with Kyler Kyle, Murray. I almost hit you with Kyler Murray. <laughs> I swear, I, you, I, first of all, Casey hates quarterbacks, and he would have been upset. But I really did. I thought about throwing. Obviously, you wouldn't need oh, it. Like you don't hate you, quarterbacks. You wouldn't too. need it. 
You wouldn't need to take him there. It's what we talk yeah. about this all the time. Even if you if you, there's no reason to take Kyler Murray there, just hang on. And the upside of Kyler Murray could be a really good addition to your team, but at one quarterback league wasn't happening. Well, I made sure I took DK last pick, so he he didn't end up on my team. <laughs> um, so I went Debo Samuel. I was really looking really hard at trying to throw a wrench in the plans. I almost took TJ Hawkinson for you. I you got a strength, throw a strength on it. There's I think you could start what three, four tight ends in this league. Um, there's a t- there's a bunch of there's, there's a there's a there's a, a fifth. You can flex. There's, I think you can flex three guys because I think you can start five wide receivers or five running backs, and I think you can start four tight ends. So you got George Kittle, you got Eric Ebron, you got Hunter Henry, and I really did almost take T.J. Hawkinson for you, but I thought you might be upset with me. Oh, it's not not actually my team no this you is do, your team well, I'm, I'm saying this but is it, your team it's not you're actually not actually making the picks for well me. you know it's, I, I knew you'd hate me if i took kyler murray and i thought you might say that was ridiculous for me to put hawkinson on the team loaded with tight ends which i don't mind adding a strength to a strength but i took debo because i thought you might need uh, a starter which there is could, three flexes so you could potentially start four of any position yeah um you know, and five. when a tight end's really going off in a tight end premium league, that's great. But a t- you know, a normal every run of the every day run two. of the mill. I played Ebron and and Kittle most weeks. Oh, obviously. But if if the tight ends aren't going off, then you'd probably rather have a good running back or a good wide receiver started in there. Um, I took Debo Samuel for you. I, there was a couple guys. I'd take Kyler Murray out of the equation. He would be a not a bad pick. But nobody's taking Kyler Murray at one six in a rookie draft. I hope you're not. But he he might crush. Um, I really did almost take Hawkinson. I gave you Debo, Debo Samuel. I was looking at a couple other wide receivers, but I felt like Debo Samuel with the draft capital going to a wide receiver needy team, Kyle Shanahan offense. I felt like, and I'm a Gamecock. I love Debo Samuel. I think he can do everything. He's very flexible, very versatile, going right down the middle of what the 49ers want to do. I felt like he was a really good, safe player for a team that didn't need anything. And you could play it. The other, if I was going to take the absolute home run cut for your team, I almost gave you Miko Hardman. Mm-hmm. I almost gave you TJ Hawkinson. That's what I was saying the other just a minute ago or the other pick were for DK with K, you know, with your t- pick. And then when Jason was talking about it, it's like I I really feel like you can p- take pick one five and one ten and just jumble them all up and what's your taste? Right. And for me, for this team, my taste was Debo because you really don't need anything, but you could really use a court, a wide receiver that'll start and maybe be- if he can become as as consistent as I think he can be. Uh, you know, you got Daddy Westbrook. He might not be consistent. You got Sammy Watkins. He could be absolutely a league winner this year. Who knows? Golden Tate, Eli Manning might love him, and he might get 10 catches a game or he might be worthless. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, And Allen Robinson, if he gets the targets that he deserves, he could be a, a easy wide receiver one. Godwin and Will Fuller, baby. <laughs> you know, like you, you're, they, they are all there for you. And I just threw Debo right in the mix, threw a little gasoline yeah. on the fire. I started, I think I started four running backs, two tight ends, and two receivers pretty much every week. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you you had the running backs. And, and, you know, looking back on it after the discussions we've had in prior picks and some discussion off air and the way I'm talking about it right now, your team is set up. And Jay Wayne really talked some sense into me earlier. Your team is set up for the home run cut, which is the way I would normally play it anyway in my rookie draft. But I just felt at the time when I gave you the Debo pick, I felt like it was a very good safe pick for a team that quite honestly is set up for a home run cut in the rookie draft. But also it's almost like give me something that's definitely going to be yeah. good. And I watch me revel in my equity because you got you got well, you probably have a top three roster in this league. Hands down. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to think so. I hope so. We'll see next year. Um, I didn't build my team to win now. Actually, I was building for the future and if it just so happened to happen that I that I could win now which I didn't I won some games I missed the playoffs by a couple points and then actually I got eliminated first week so bummer that's why I'm picking here right um I don't hate the pick I'm, I'm down with Debo I like Debo a lot I think he's I think like you said he's the 49ers are kind of putting a real emphasis on versatility so they can kind of interchange a lot of pieces and do a lot of different things I think I think uh, Debo screams that uh, along with Dante Pettis, but I, I like Debo a little more than than Dante Pettis. He can win in or outside, um, and he can do it in a variety of different ways. And he's just a bully with the ball in his hands. I mean, that's his name. Nickname is Debo. His real name's not Debo. His name's <laughs> you know Tyshawn or something like but that. How do you going, pronounce that? Tyshawn. Tyshawn. Bo. 
Gamecocks ain't never heard nothing but Debo. Yeah, yeah. We got so, we knew when he got there he was Debo. When he left he was Debo. So yeah. Pops gave him the nickname like the the character from Friday. He's Debo. People. He earned he's, it because he's a bully. That's my bike, punk. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love watching this guy play play ball. Um, some people will say that he's not that great outside. I think he's just fine outside. Um, Clemson in, in the Clemson game, you can see him kind of get jammed. In in uh, when he's playing outside, he gets the jam. He kind of absorbs it, eats it, blows back on him, and still catches the slant for a touchdown. Um, so you could take that up and put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, I think he's a tough, gritty player. Uh, he had the seventeen that was about to be amazing and got hurt, um, mm-hmm. and then throughout eighteen, you see him slowly kind of building back up uh, the speed and the from quickness the, from the broken so, foot. So I don't think Whoa. it was there yeah, the I whole mean, time, but I think by the end of it, it was. And then you saw him test well at the combine. Um, he can, he's just a gritty, he's a good blocker. He's ready to roll. I think he fits right in with what Shanahan wants to do. They're looking to rebuild that and revamp that receiving core. And I think him and Pettis are nice, uh, building blocks. Obviously Godwin's still there. We talked about this a little bit on Patreon last week, but, um, Goodwin is still there. Yeah. Goodwin. Sorry. And, uh, I like, I like the pick. I like, I'm, I'm down with Debo. Yeah, I, I like this pick. Uh, we haven't done a breakdown of Debo, uh, so to give you a little bit of background, he is 23 years old, so Simmons is old. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. So on Twitter, when I was doing first doing the research <laughs> and I thought maybe we would do a rookie breakdown on this guy, I didn't quite get to it, but I asked what the big problem, what, why more people didn't have Debo high, and really nothing came back besides injuries and that he was long in the tooth. So. He's old. He has a late breakout age. 20.6, so that's not good. He has a 42nd percent college dominator, so not good. I don't think. I don't. I think he wanted in a much higher. I think 40 is a good percentage, but not the of the 40th rank. percentile, right? Not the percentile. But he does have 85 percentile spark score, so you know, pick that's your not poison. Cut it. That's not gonna cut it. It doesn't cut it. Uh, but I think you can make an excuse for the late breakout age. I mean, that's it w- it's with another knock. It's his injury history. Uh, dealt with a hamstring injury most of 2015. Only played five games. Gamecocks went three and nine that year without him. Uh, he picked up another hamstring injury in before the season started in 2016. Played a couple games to start that year and then missed the next four. And then, like you said, fractured his fibula in uh, 2017 versus Kentucky. Thought he tried might come, to play. Right. They thought he might come back for the bowl game. He ended up sitting that out. Tried to play after he hurt himself. He, yeah. He, yeah. He's tough. Walked off nails. the field and walked around, put his helmet back on. And Tried to pretend like his foot wasn't broke. Yeah. yeah. He's tough. Look, to, to go against the Dominator rating for a second, uh, he's played the whole oh, what? Time. You the, can't go against the Dominator rating? To go with crazy? To, to, to explain that, <laughs> like, we've he's got, he's got a, we had Hayden Hurst out there that was actually very dominant at the college level for a, an old tight end that just stopped playing baseball and had minimal reps at football for a couple of years. He was out there making plays. Just and Brian Edwards, bastardizing the the yeah. the, uh, the breakout the, the, age. Yeah, old Hayden exactly, Hurst over there. Exactly. <laughs> it, he was out there. <laughs> <laughs> so Hayden Hurst was out there making plays against young boys because he was a grown man and he was making them look stupid. And why not, not sure if the breakout age matters for tight if you ends need or not, if you need anything, you throw it to Hayden Hurst because he's 26 already and been in the Air Force or something and played football and ba- baseball. And he's just a grown man. Uh, and Brian Edwards was super solid, uh, smartly didn't come out in this wide receiver class because it was stacked. Went back to school, thankfully, uh, Gamecocks need him. Um, and we got like a Shaw Smith out there catching yeah. some ball. We got we had some weapons. We couldn't tackle anybody for a couple years now, so we can't win games. But like we had some weapons, and it wasn't just the – now that's 2017 when – before he broke his foot. He was we, about to have a, bre- a, a breakout. It was dominant. <laughs> the dominator rating was there through five games. It was t- He scored throwing the ball, scored catching the ball, scored running the ball, scored kick a kickoff return. He had all four different scores, and he had like six, six or seven scores in the first four games. D- unstoppable. And then he hurt his foot, which happens yep. in football. Talking yep. about injuries, like he broke his foot. A couple of soft tissues, and then a, and then a foot break. But I'm um, I'm in on the Debo, and I like I like the landing spot. So what if this is your team? Mm-hmm. So given, like you said, you took DK, so you couldn't go to your <laughs> team. If if you were on the clock there at one six, would you take Debo? Would you take Hawk? Would you take Paris Campbell? Like what 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 would you do if it was yours? Hmm. 
Should I? Should we throw that to Patreon or should I? Uh, okay, should we can I take answer? that to Patreon. What do, you, what do you guys think? I think we should take it to Patreon. All right, that's a personal question. A little, a little bit more for Debo. I mean, he's he's. You guys mentioned it after the catch. He's just one of the sickest dudes on the field. Like if you watch that Clemson game, he made us look pretty stupid in 2018. The game was already over, but we could not tackle this dude. He broke. Well, like it was 28-14. Then it made it not over again because everybody knew that when your offense got the ball, we couldn't stop you, but. Debo single-handedly kept the score close two times in a row to yeah. give us a chance to make the game not over, and you eventually made you know did he, what you do. He was crushing it. He's very versatile. He goes all over the place. He he does work from the slot. He's got some ridiculous one-handed catches. He can make the wild play. I think he varies his play speed. I like him off the line of scrimmage. He's got a good hesitation and jab step. He sets up defenders well, and. You know, you see him lined up at halfback sometimes. That's no, kind of no cool. Doubt. He, he can do a lot with quick tosses and jet sweeps. He crushed kick returns. So there's a lot of ways for him to get on the field, a lot of ways to get the ball in his hands, and a lot of ways for him to prove his value and to be successful. And then you want to throw coach speak into here. You got Kyle Shanahan and oh, Jimmy G and the 49ers, and they needed a wide receiver, and they took him really high. Right. Was, I think the third wide receiver off the board. Yep. And not a lot of people saw that coming, but a lot of people did like him. And Early second. A lot to like about this dude. Uh, I'm cool with this pick. What I like a lot about him is, like y'all two who are not watching a lot of Gamecock games, the easiest thing to see is how good he is after the catch. But the good thing about Debo is, and the reason that I got a good, strong feeling, we've Gamecocks have put out some decent wide receivers that weren't too great in the NFL. Obviously, Sidney Rice had Brett Favre for a little while, and he was a crusher. But when... Debo is kind of got Debo him. is good at being able to get the ball, and he's good, at, and he will. And if the ball gets anywhere close, he's going to catch it. There's a lot of guys that are good with the ball in their hands, but they can't either a get open to catch the ball or yeah. b catch it to begin with. Right. So Debo can do those two things, and once he gets the ball, he is ridiculous. He did have so, eleven drops, was seventy second in drop rate, but still a lot of drops out there for all these guys. Tons of drops out there. But I like the pick. Uh, so I think I think that'll wrap up today's show. Yeah, let's get out of here. Uh, yeah, definitely go check out the website. We've been to, to recite all the stats and everything for you guys and, and anything combine-wise. We're, we're checking out the player pages on the, the FFDynasty.com. Uh, if, you've, if you've visited the website in the past and if you've experienced any latency, I think I got all the kinks ironed out. Things seem to be running pretty smooth from end to end. Definitely go check it out. Let me know. I'd love to hear any feedback, positive or negative. Uh, reach us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. And uh, we have our own individual handles at Dynasty Big Co, at IMC Myers, at Jay Wayne's World. We'd love a five star review on iTunes. That would be just the best. For sure. And just piggyback on Jay Wayne's effort here. I mentioned this maybe a week or three ago on the on the uh, um, pleasure chest on Patreon. Like, we don't have all the player pages yet on all the players in the NFL. But as these guys are going in as rookies here, what the, the player pages that are up for these rookies are ridiculous. These are really, really awesome. So if you haven't been to the website yet, you should go check it out. And then once you do, you'll be like, dang, I need to pay Jay Wayne to make me a website. Because this boy self-taught in the last two years. And this is a sick website. It's not, it's not complete from A to Z with all the players yet. But the ones he's put his hands on, those are some cool player pages. You should go check it out. Definitely. Uh, put a lot of work into that thing. So, would love, like I said, any feedback. And we're about to go over to Patreon. We're going to recap these first six picks and talk about where we disagreed and who's dumb and who's smart and uh, why and why not. So, we're going to have some fun with that. And if uh, we have some time, we might jump into this UDPL rookie draft that we had where, you know, other. Uh, Twitter dynasty podcasts are in this league with us and, and they get to all put their stamp on who and what and there's a lot of activity and trading and and it all correlates to a lot of questions that we're answering on our community page on Patreon a ton of draft questions coming in about hey I'm on the clock at 2-6 and I got these guys I'm looking at who do I take and we're trying to help everybody through their picks as we also work through our mock it up and uh, we just appreciate you guys listening and if you want some more content, head over to Patreon. Obviously, after six months, you get that dope T-shirt. Heard nothing but great things about that soft, uh, pleasurable T-shirt. Yeah, I'm going to need another one because my wife took mine. Nice. Well, we could get your wife one. No, no, no problem. Fair enough. Uh, all right, guys. Till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.